Hey, what is up guys and welcome to my first ever Kerbal Space Program video. So in this video, as you guys can see in the title, I'm going to be building my very own space station. So I'm going to be launching the space station core with inside this space shuttle that I'm building. So a lot of you already know how to build a space shuttle. Some of you probably have mods of space shuttle parts. Um, but I'm going with the, the stock space shuttle stuff. And this took me a relatively long time to build because I just reinstalled the game previously and I could not remember where any of these parts were. Especially that part just there. I did not remember a thing. I didn't even know where I must have I passed that like five to six times. And I do not remember seeing that. So I literally forgot where that was. So the plan for the uh, space station is to um, just be there for research and for refueling. So there's going to be um, just two parts that is going to be launched in this video in this episode the first part is definitely the space station core because you can't have a space station without a core and the second part i'm going to be launching for the space station is the refinery um i didn't had much time or memory to completely launch another um refinery the second refinery that's going to be on both ends of this space station so yeah i just ended the video with the last with the docking of the first refinery so in the next episode you're going to see the docking of the second refinery and then the uh <clears throat> and then we will have the um what right then we will have the solar panels on both sides of the refinery but before i do that i think i will have to add like another um docking port joint so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna launch up a docking port joint before i um launch up the solar panels so that's what it's gonna do so it's gonna be the two refineries for the space station core the two refineries the two um, docking port joints and then there's gonna be the solar panels then after the solar panels the solar um uh, then after the solar panels i might add a habitation module or a science lab so it's either two of those uh, <coughs> a habitation module or a science lab that i'm going to be <coughs> placing on the space station and then the space station will be complete with some ore fuel tanks and then a command center <coughs> so that's what the space station is going to be and not Oh yeah, it's not going to end with just a command center. I got to add like uh, experiments. Yeah, I'm going to add, after I add the science bay, the um, ore fuel tanks, I'm going to add some experiments, like a communication tower, um, experiments in space, stuff like that to do. And yeah, honestly, this space station is the first step to many that I'm going to be making in this series. Because in this series of Kerbal Space Program that I'm now going to be uploading on a daily, is I'm going to con I'm gonna like uh, put space stations on every moon or planet if I can, and then just basically co conquer the whole entire solar system. So after the space station is done, you guys will see what the next mission is. So the first mission is, the first mission right now is the space station. That's the first mission. The second mission is probably going to be a moon or minmus mission. Depends. So, <clears throat> or the second mission might be a communication network, something like that. So I might have to download remote tech to see how things go. Okay, so we're getting, I'm now building the, uh, space station core so there we have the six wait hold up yeah we got the six docking port um the six docking port adapter and i was originally planning on putting a fuel tank there but then i told myself let me use the uh phoenix the phoenix uh capsule 
I have a mod for that, so yeah, I'm gonna use the Phoenix capsule and the adapter that has its mono its mono propellant, and it also has uh that's like a decoupler to itself. So if I ever want to send a Kerbo up into space, I would send them into the if I want to send a Kerbo to the space station, I would send them to the Phoenix capsule just to stay there for a couple of days and. A couple of days in orbit and then get them back down to Kerbal. So right here I am looking for a <laughs> I'm looking for a solar cell to put at the side of this thing. But little did I know this thing actually just went straight inside of the darn of the darn adapter. It just went straight inside of the Phoenix adapter or decoupler I should say. It just went inside and I just had to take it off and put it back on and look for a different solar panel to place on there. And <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know why it took me so long, but like I said, I uninstalled the game and reinstalled it. So it took me a while to... Um, it took me a while to like build this, like I was moving extremely slow, so that's why I had to speed up, speed up everything. So it wouldn't be so like, slow and boring. And honestly, I gotta add some music in the background, but I have nothing to play at this time. So hopefully in the next episode, we got some music playing from when I'm building this stuff. Um, I think music is going to be added for like some like the launch, first launch of this. I don't know. The first launch of the um, space shuttle to see how it flies. And then we will get into the actual successful flight. Because I don't know. I can't. I remember what happened. But all I know is that the, at the ending, that this space shuttle just flipped out. That's all I remember, but I can't remember what really caused it. So, yeah, you guys will see that in a moment or two. So, the space shuttle is now complete. Um, filled with all its um, components. The space station core. And now I'm just going to add some wheels to bring this. When I bring this sucker back home, we're going to be good. Um, I don't think I added um, parachutes, did I? I? I think I added parachutes in this video, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I did. I looked for some parachutes and added some parachutes at the back of the uh, shuttle. We all know that the, every space shuttle has a parachute to slow it down from its velocity, from when it's flying down or landing. So, yeah. So, I just retracted those legs and I moved it over to the V8, to the... Um, VAB or no SAB sorry SVB sorry wait what I can't remember what it's called sorry but anyways <coughs> so yeah <coughs> right now I'm just going to be adding on the external fuel tank <coughs> excuse me for my talking my coughing I'm going to be adding the external fuel tank so I was playing around with um, different fuel tanks to see where the I know where the weight would end up because if you're building the space shuttle and you've seen anyone build a space shuttle, you know that at the bottom of the space shuttle of the external fuel tank is shorter than at the top. So the weight is at the top of the external fuel tank. So it will lean to the uh, it will lean to the external fuel tank. So I just um, look for that fuel pipe, added a fuel pipe to the uh, external fuel tank and a space shuttle to transfer all the fuel from the external fuel tank so we don't have to burn through any of that and then we've got the solid rocket boosters that has been added in the 1.8 update so we now have solid rocket boosters for actual space shuttle missions and that is actually really cool so i'm going to be strutting down the solid rocket boosters stop them from shaking around or moving while they launch and i'm going to be strutting down the uh space shuttle too just in case if anything goes wrong with that thing shaking around like crazy. So I'm just going to be setting up the stages here. Making sure all the stages are correct. That we don't mistakenly stage one part before the other. And then we just get a huge explosion. Then we're going to be grabbing the yellow clamps. To um, clamp the external fuel tank and the side boosters. And the <clears throat> space shuttle to keep them in place. Because you all, we all know that you can't launch a space shuttle just like how it was before you you can't launch it like that you gotta get something to keep this thing together so it will stop leaning to the side or breaking apart yeah. 
Okay, and we're on the launch pad. So I set it up Medjeb, set up Medjeb and everything, and now we're ready to launch. All right, we've got the launch. And one of the problems there was I had a clamp <clears throat> way too high. So it just hit the uh, external fuel tank and just tipped it over to the side a little. But Medjeb still had control. And the second problem I had was, as you guys can see here, the Phoenix capsule was burning through its monopropellant, trying to help the rocket, the shuttle, to get into the air. That was so hilarious. But <clears throat> it burned through a little bit of its monopropellant, so I had to open the bay doors, shut off that engine, and close them back. So after that, we are on a smooth flight to the 150 kilometer orbit. So, yeah, everything looks smooth. We're having a relative, <clears throat> the Kerbals are having a fun time. They're smiling, can't wait to get into space and back down to Kerbin. And this is attempt number one, guys. So, don't think this is the actual launch. This is attempt number one. So, just prepare for the worst that can happen here. Because anything can happen. And I mean anything. And sorry for the sniffing you guys are hearing right now. Like, I'm coming down with a cold apparently. So, the solid rocket boosters are about to run out of their solid fuel. And we're hitting um, the Q limit, which I never turned on. So, we're just experiencing. So, the shuttle is just experiencing atmospheric dynamic pressure right now. So, I turned up the uh, throttle. To 80 and we went into heat mode so the boosters ran out I separated them but they collided with the fins the gliders on the wings and broke both of them off and then after that <coughs> the shuttle just could not control the aerodynamics so <coughs> the thing that took place was the aerodynamics and the weight of the external fuel tank and that just threw the whole rocket off that's all that happened all right, so here's the actual launch and here we go. Okay, so we have successfully launched the shuttle this time. The clamp did not collide with the external fuel tank and the capsule inside the cargo bay did not launch its RCS thrusters to help the shuttle to get into orbit. So I fixed those issues, minor small issues, not a big problem. And now we are on our way to see how the um, space shuttle will do and how everything will turn out so like i said earlier into the video the space station core will be in a 150 mile orbit so that is not its main orbit that's just its um parking orbit for now the main, the final parking orbit will be 200 or will be 400 or 350 miles above Kerbin. <clears throat> so we would have a far distance from in terms of any aerodynamic problems. And the solid rocket boosters are going to run out right now and we jettison them. But the one on the right, the right solid rocket booster apparently ev evaporated and blew up itself because of the heat. But thank God it didn't collide with the wings and cause any damage because that's what happened the last time. So now we have a nut, uh, the shuttle is now stable. It's running its throttle at 70%, I believe. And the external fuel tank is not... The external fuel tank and the uh, space shuttle isn't experiencing any aerodynamics. So we are good for the shuttle and its orbit maneuver and ascendance. So Met Jeb is doing all the work. I'm just here just making sure everything goes right. And we have reached the apoapsis of, apoapsis of 150 miles in, and in orbit. And when the space shuttle like reached that point met jeb is like nope just shut off and just spin out of control <laughs> so i just um made sure that i turned on the rcs to control that rotation so met jeb will continue to do its maneuver node to get the parking orbit finally 
Uh, sorry for the sniffles you guys are hearing right now. Apparently, I'm getting sick. I was fine earlier. But after I did this mission, I recorded it like over five times or three times, I think. Or tested it five times and three times. I like definitely just got sick and tired of everything. So, Matt Jeb is now doing the maneuver, board, the, the, uh, maneuver burn to get us into a parking orbit of 150. So, I just switched the stage in there to activate the top engines at the top of this uh, space shuttle to help it with a little boost and we have the orbit so I had to shut off everything had to shut off Met Jeb make sure that Met Jeb is completely turned off the autopilot and now the rocket the um, space shuttle is facing partially retro a bit retrograde fully almost retrograde so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna I just check the in the uh, Apoapsis and periapsis. Then I decouple the external fuel tank to refuel the uh, space shuttle and to release all the weight that we won't need. Use the RCS thrusters to push the space shuttle away from the uh, external fuel tank. <coughs> and now we are just going to slow down the space shuttle to open the cargo bay doors to release the space station core. So I just want to say that I have, yes, I have successfully have it out in orbit now. And <clears throat> I was, I, I was, while I was doing this, I was deciding whether to, uh, whether to do the um, refinery in this video or just do that in a second video. But I decided to just do the refinery in this video. So we will have two refineries attached to the um, space station core. And then in the next episode, we will have the solar power. That's what we will have. So we have successfully separated from the space shuttle. And now we are on our way to just drift off from them. That's what the space station core is doing. We extend the solar panels to make sure that the solar power is going good. Because we only got four batteries on that thing. And now it's time to deorbit the space shuttle. So I sped this up by one multiple. Multiple, multiply by one. I sped this up by multiply by one. And that literally just pushed the video up to 24 minutes. So we're 24 minutes. We're like 17 minutes into the video right now and heading into 18 minutes shortly. So I pointed the uh, space shuttle retrograde. So we can deorbit the space shuttle and land it safely at the KFC runway. So that's what we're doing right now. So I'm going to point the space shuttle to the prograde mark now. So when we head into the atmosphere, we can aerodynamically slow down the space shuttle. And that's what's going to be happening right now. So I just made sure that I stabilized it, made sure it was pointing the right way, made sure it wasn't on an angle or anything. Everything looks like it's going smoothly. I mean, that's what it was supposed to do. Like, it, the space shuttle was supposed to have landed safely at the runway without having a single problem and yeah apparently the docking port that i had within the space shuttle got detached while they detached the uh space the uh, the core of the space uh space station and it was just floating around in a cargo bay like crazy so how to get rid of that close back the cargo bay doors and back into deorbiting so that thing is not an orbit that space junk is deorbiting also so i was trying to use mech jeb to automatically land the space shuttle but the moment i did that the space shuttle just i don't even know you guys are gonna see in a sec what i mean and what happened to the space shuttle because you guys will be amazed of what mech jeb can do when it's supposed to be an autopilot system and it's not an auto. It is a good autopilot system, but sometimes it can be a little bit wonky. It doesn't work the way how it should. And honestly, that really annoyed the crap out of me because that's not what I wanted. So I sped up the uh, time in the game. 
and made sure that I kept the uh, space shuttle pointing prograde and a little bit above the prograde mark so the aerodynamic force when it comes back down into the atmosphere it will slow down the rocket pretty darn well honestly <sighs> and I think I might have done something foolish while I was doing this because of the aerodynamics in the game right and the type of fuel that the um, space shuttle uses it kind of screwed me up big time here so we're coming we're having the uh, atmospheric um, pre we're uh, we're going back into the atmosphere we're doing good the space shuttle is keeping it stationary is a stationary stable not spinning around or anything but the moment i turn off rcs is when it started to wobble a little bit but sas still has it under control and i have some generators therm some generators in the uh, space shuttle to keep the battery power going so we won't run out of battery power because when it was testing this re-entry the re-entry of it we ran out of electrical charge and the whole thing just went out of control and that's not exactly what I wanted. <clears throat> I wanted to land this thing <clears throat> safely on the Kerbal Space Center's runway. So I was getting bored. So I was like, you know what? I don't feel confident in controlling this. So I'm going to get this to land at the runway. <clears throat> and I turned on autopilot for this thing. <clears throat> I turned on land at target, I turned on autopilot, and then afterwards the whole shuttle just went out of control. It was stationary, but then it just literally went on a spinning spree. And the orbit was already way too low, so I wouldn't have made it anyways. So I had to turn that off and see if it could regain control of the space shuttle. Which I eventually did. Hopefully it's coming around soon. Where I get control. Of the space shuttle. But the thing is. Is that. I got a little bit. Uh, like way impatient. And just did something really stupid. So what I did. I used the uh, engines. On the shuttle. To regain control. Of it from spinning out. And also try to keep the aerodynamics going on it. But that did not go as how I planned it. So right now the space shuttle is using its engines to... <coughs> try to keep its nose up. But I was not keeping my eye on one thing. I did not keep my eyes on the oxidizer in the fuel tank. So all we had was liquid fuel, but no oxidizer. The oxidizer burned out. And I, because of the aerodynamics, I thought, like, yeah, the engine's still firing. Yeah, the engine wasn't still firing. And <clears throat> the engine was actually, like, you know, dead. And it was like, uh, well, the engines are dead. And the aerodynamics aren't going to kick in unless I have some kind of vertical speed. Not vertical, some some kind of like horizontal speed to keep this nose up, and I did not have that. So the space shuttle was literally just going for a complete dive in the ocean. So rip to the Kerbals because that's exactly what happened. No oxidizer. I was trying to see if I could find a way to get the nose up, like try to switch the engines or something. But then those engines don't switch. They just don't. So that's why I was thinking I should just put a docking port on the space shuttle, dock to the space station core. So when I send up the refinery, because the refinery is going to have some liquid fuel tanks on it. So it would transfer the oxidizer to the space shuttle so we won't run out of that again. But that was a little bit too late. So I know my lesson this time, so I won't do that again. And the sp space shuttle just went for a complete nerve dive, and that was the end of that. Try to deploy the parachutes too, but yep, the Kerbal still died anyways.
Okay, now this is where I'm going to be building the reformery where we will have a conveyor, a converter and a fuel tank that I said I was going to add earlier. So that's what I'm going to be building right now. It's just going to be adding a docking port. Um, of course, to dock to the uh, to the um, piece of the space station core. And then we're going to add the converter, which converts ore into fuel. Then we're going to add a RCS tank. Then we're going to add like a little adapter. Then we're going to... I was trying to figure out what to place there to restructure it to make it stronger because this space station is going to be a little bit huge. So I was trying to add a battery or something that is of, a, of the right size for that adapter. But nothing I found worked. So I had to use a like a little fuel tank <coughs> and it matched and I restructured it with a little strength <coughs> thanks to that fuel tank then I added another RCS tank and then after that RCS tank I went and added a fuel tank I was looking around for some fuel tanks that were of the right size but I was playing around with the round with the wrong one the right one with the right fuel tank was those was those three at the top so I went with the shortest one and I was trying to attach like I was trying to attach it but it looks like it was attached to the one in the middle it wasn't attaching properly so I just made sure that everything was attached to each other added two of those short ones those short fuel tanks then I decided then I added a um sorry for the ringtone you guys are hearing in the background then I added a docking port which took a while to like completely get attached because that was like not listening to me at all and no matter what i did <clears throat> so i brought forward the uh brought forward the uh refinery piece of the um space station to see if everything was attached and no the docking port was not attached so what i did was just took off take off the sharp fuel tank reattached it then reattach the docking port again. So I reattached the docking port. Then I took another one, another docking port, and placed at the other end. So I just fixed back the um, docking port inside the space shuttle. <coughs> and then I added another docking port on the other end of the space shuttle so the uh, refinery won't be moving around. So there we have the refinery, the base part of the refinery. Um, all I have to do now for, all I did now was look for some kind of power source I was looking for. It was either batteries or the generator. So I decided to go over to generator. So I put three, a piece on both sides of the, both sides of the adapter, on both adapters. So it will have equal power. Looks like a nuclear fusion core there to me, but <clears throat> then I added some RCS thrusters at the end of the converter, I mean the refinery. And then I realized I'm missing something, a command, like something to, to command it with. Um, so I was looking around to see if the MetJeb 2 like remote thing there would work. But then I'm like, you know what, let me just look for a small little pro piece to attach to the refinery part. And I couldn't attach it anywhere, so I had to get some struts, some um, <clears throat> bar th bar struts to um placed place on the <clears throat> refinery, and then I place the. I tried placing it on top of the um generator, but I'm like, nah, that's gonna stick through the uh top of the com the uh cargo bay. So I'm like, you know what, no. <sighs> Forgive me for yawning. So that's where I came in and added the bar struts, and that's where the uh, probe, the small little probe, will go for control. So the converter, the refinery is finished. So all I got to do now is just attach this guy to the external fuel tank after I add on some lights because. 
I'm going to need some lights to see next time I'm dark, docking, but even though I have like the brightness of the game up to a certain extent so you can see in the dark, but you know, just for curiosity and look, say I just did that. So I was looking to add a solar, like a communication network or something, but I'm like, nah, forget it. So just I just closed the bay doors after I renamed the um, space station to core to space station shuttle. Then I saved it and closed the bay doors and then attached the space shuttle to the external fuel tank and its two side boosters. So there's one thing that I definitely forgot. Um, I forgot to add kerbals into the space shuttle the space shuttle only flew because of the uh, probe that I have inside that's the only reason why the space shuttle flew in the first place so I'm just here reattaching now the um, external fuel tank because it wasn't attached to the decoupler at all all the struts and everything was intact so yeah onto the launch pad and we're here on the launch pad now. I'm changing the um, limit throttle to 70. And I was trying to try out something new. I set the uh, space station core as a target. I was trying to launch to rendezvous, but the launch to rendezvous didn't go so well. So that kind of screwed me over. So here's the second launch of the space shuttle. And we're launching now. And a second successful launch of the space shuttle. This time, no Kerbals. So, currently, right now, in the game, after this recording, the space shuttle is li literally, literally just floating around in space, in space with no Kerbals to control it. And I need to get Kerbals to dock to that space shuttle so they can deorbit it and hopefully I'll be able to deorbit the uh, space shuttle um, properly this time I might record a short little video for that for you guys in the next episode <coughs> I might not <coughs> depends on how things go <coughs> but because of time and storage of making these videos and there goes the side booster exploding again but in terms of time and memory for on my phone to make these videos um i might have to make i might just have to add the second refinery oh, the second refinery on the uh <clears throat> in the second video or do that off camera so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to record it and then just put that as the intro part for next episode. <coughs> so you guys will see the... Uh, you guys will see the docking of the second um, uh, refinery. And then we'll be on to adding the solar cells. And I won't be you. I don't think I'll be using the space shuttle for the um, refinery cells until the um, solar cells until I um, find a way to land this thing properly. So I'm going to be practicing practicing a lot this Saturday to see how everything goes. So I changed the throttle from a, um, 70 to 90 percent or 80, I believe. And we're just waiting for the space shuttle to get into orbit once again so this is the second time you guys are seeing the space shuttle in action the whole plan is is to use this as many times as i want or can i should say and here we are at the uh, docking part now i had to skip all the maneuvering and all that because that would take some time so we got close to the space station core and now we're just going to be doing some little burns to slow down our velocity to match the velocity of the space station core. And then we're going to be opening the cargo bay doors to release the first refinery to get attached to the docking ports. One of the docking ports of the space station core. <clears throat> so the space station core is was when I got there, the space station core was stable. 
Um, there is no power issues or anything, but yet again, why should there be a power issue if I have solar panels on there? But I, you never know what can happen. <sighs> so as I just do these small little burns to correct the trajectory, the approach, and the um, velocity of both of both um, spacecrafts. Um, wasn't using MetJab for this one. I might have a rendezvous planner window open there, but it's not activated. I have that off. This is all done manually. Um, MetJab was controlling the docking because I am terrible at docking. So I just let MetJab do the auto docking, save me a lot of time, and just let me just lay back and watch. So I slow down the velocity of the space shuttle. And like I said earlier, there are no Kerbals in this space shuttle. So it is in space, just floating around with nobody to inside. It's just an empty vessel with a lot of fuel that I need to return it back to Kerbin. So yeah, um, realistic, realistically speaking, if I want to reuse the space shuttle, I need to bring it back. But that kind of doesn't make any sense compared to the last shuttle that I made, right? That one went crashing down straight into the ocean. So Jebediah, Bill, and I, Valentina, Kerman, Kerbal, Ker wait, is Bob, I think it was Jeb, Bob, and Bill that was in there. Those Kerbals died. <laughs> Those guys crashed into the ocean and died. So that is really unfortunate for them. So I was trying to undock the... Uh, refinery but it just wouldn't redock I think it was doing something wrong so what I did I switched to the refinery I just undocked it from the space shuttle and it still didn't work so I had to undock it from the back because that's what I forgot so I undocked it from both ends it got loose and from that tight spot and bam we've got the refinery out of the space shuttle which is empty and then I turn on Metjeb, Metjeb's auto docking I didn't re I didn't capture the um, docking part so the thing literally docked on its own without me recording it so I was trying all this time I was trying to get control of the space shuttle to move it away while the refinery was docking all on its own that's what I love Metjeb for because I can switch to another vessel, do what I gotta do on Met Jeb, or just do what it it has to do. So, yeah, I just see a small little glimpse there of it rendezvousing with its rendezvous with the space station core, and it's gonna dock on its own without me even doing anything. So yeah, I, like I said, I was just constantly trying to get this thing to move. So we got the dock. It has successfully docked to the space station core and like I said in the next video guys I will do a short clip of the next one